electric cars, CNG, heavy duty vehicles. So th with this one, we'll focus on the electric vehicles. So why have electric vehicles? Well, transportation comprises uh, almost half of our overall uh, CO2 emissions in the state. It's more than twice the electric sector. And we don't have a comprehensive program in place to deal with that number right now. So what's good about electric vehicles? All kinds of stuff, but little, few emissions. And what, what I like about them is if you charge them up at night, it takes advantage of unused grid resources, thus uh, producing economic and societal benefits, which uh, hopefully will transition into some rate case in the, in the future. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're more efficient. We, you can get a tax credit. Uh, so, uh, it's calculated savings in healthcare costs, lower greenhouse gas emissions, etc. In terms of price, uh, regular there's a little calculator on the website. Uh, regular gas or electric, and the e gallon of gas is uh, is cheaper. Uh, the Energy Master Plan uh, spoke favorably of alternative fuel vehicles, uh, electric vehicles and CNG vehicles, compressed natural gas, but it didn't go into a lot of detail. So uh, now it's time for the details. So that's what I'm uh, working on. And uh, all the, uh, uh, in, the, in the comments on the Energy Master Plan, uh, the, all the environmental groups said, yeah, yeah, go do this. Uh, the business group said, go do this. And uh, all, the public said, go do this. So. And the utility said go do this. Well, New Jersey Natural and Elizabeth Tan are in the compressed natural gas vehicle. Yes. They approved them. And they approved their program. Yes. It, well, with respect <laughs> to the EMP, they're saying, yes, uh, mm -hmm. we should be uh, more heavily engaged in all these mm -hmm. things. You're really living the clean dream, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Since yep. the oil embargo. The chosen one. Since, here. Since really? the oil embargo. Uh, uh, federal incentive, the best one is a uh, tax credit up to 7500 bucks. Uh, in New Jersey, we, New Jersey has a great incentive for electric vehicles. It's a sales tax exemption for a pure electric car. But that's, about, that's really about it. And BEV stands for what? Uh, battery electric vehicle. Thank you. So let's start with, uh, we, know about, um, we know about the Prius. Uh, that's a hybrid. But to step it up, a plug-in electric vehicle like this. So you can take your... Uh, Take your car, plug it in. This is a Society of Automotive Engineers a standard connector. You plug it into your car, charge it up. So going beyond a, a hybrid, there's a plug-in hybrid. And the, with those cars, you have, a, you have a big battery and a motor where you can drive it around. So you can go anywhere from 13 to 56 miles on the battery alone. Then it switches to gas. And that, that all translates into about uh, 85 miles per gallon equivalent. So, I was surprised to see an outlet mall down near the shore, and they actually had part of the parking lot to plug in. Yeah. yeah. There, there are, there's a few out there, and you could see uh, where they are on your on your phone. You could see uh, electronic maps, and on the dashboard of your car, you could see where they are. So this is. Um, this is my own uh, plug-in car, so it's 88 miles per gallon equivalent. So that's uh, that's pretty good. That's better than a that's better than a regular old Prius. The how, many are the, how many are in the state that you can plug into as you're driving? It's only 13 to 56 miles. So how many where you have to? That's your range. How many electric so vehicles? So here, I mean, is it sufficient in the state of New Jersey? And where do you find the in inefficiencies, like in other states, or where it's not sufficient? Or because you're crossing board, you, this is your only car, so you're going. Well, no, I'll, there's a slide on that coming okay, up. Okay, okay. Um, the market leader in this plug-in uh, plug-in plug hybrid segment is the Chevy Volt, Volt with a V. You might have heard of the Chevy Volt. So that goes 56 uh, miles on the electric only. Step up from the plug-in uh, hybrid is the pure electric vehicle or the battery electric vehicle, like a Tesla. And they get about 100 miles per gallon equivalent. The Tesla, the driving range is the Tesla is the leader with uh, 265 miles. And even the less expensive ones uh, drive about 76 miles on uh, electric only. But there's no, ga no gas backup, which creates range anxiety. I mean, you're driving down the road, you're seeing the needle go like this, and you're like, am I going to make it? So that's, that's a. Uh, that's one of the things that causes people to be a little concerned about these vehicles. Mm. 
Market leaders are the Nissan Leaf and the, all of the Teslas are, uh, are battery electric. The electric world is hybrid, not a pure electric. It's a plug-in hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we get the commissioner of Tesla so you can do <laughs> <that stuff. laughs> um, This is my uh, personal electric car fleet. And just to benchmark this, this is a Ford Fusion hybrid. Um, just it's going to get, it's 44 miles per gallon. You can't plug it in. Step it up. That's this is the Ford C Max Energy. You can plug it in, and that's so it gets 88 miles per gallon equivalent. And it's got a car. It's got a it's got a motor and a battery in it as well. So two two modes of propulsion. So the next one is a pure battery electric vehicle will go uh, about 100 miles of range, 105 miles per gallon equivalent. And why is that different than plug-in again? These, well, to start over, this is uh, this car has a 1.4 kilowatt hour battery, can't plug it in, but it has a yeah. gas backup. Sure. This car has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery, and you can plug it in and charge it up like yeah. this. Yes. Like this. Yeah. Does, does and then, so what's the focus then? And then the focus is there's no gas in that at all. It's a it's yeah. just a battery and a motor, big but battery. But plug it in too. Plug it in. Oh, okay. Does yeah. the Ford does the Ford focus um, um, pure battery uh, do regenerative braking and, and yes, uh, all these vehicles uh, have the characteristic of regenerative <laughs> braking. So <laughs> as you as you slow down it. The motor turns into a generator. Any coasting or anything like that. Yeah. It's going to try to re re and it charges the battery. Cover the energy. That's interesting. Every hybrid, every plug-in hybrid, every electric vehicle has a regenerative brake. How often do you replace the batteries? The warranty is like 10 years. But my suggestion is this: that uh, you lease the vehicles. So think of them like an iPhone. They they improve uh, fairly quickly over time. They'll charge faster, go farther, and so you, you don't want. You probably don't want a four, five, six-year-old electric car. You want to change them out over time. So uh, you can lease these. The, uh, the, the tax incentives flow down into the lease. So I leased this one for two forty a month, and that one for like one ninety-nine a month for an electric car. So it's uh, it's fairly reasonable. And um, this one I have returned already. When I return this one in a year, there's uh, some great cars uh, right on the horizon that I'm in interested in. There again is the, um, the window stickers, the pure electric, 105 miles per gallon equivalent, the plug-in 88. That's, uh, those are game-changing numbers, folks. They should, uh, they should ha get your attention. And then this is, the, um, this is the level two charging station at my house. So it runs on 240 volts. That's like clothes dryer level uh, elect electricity. So Mike, can you make cars like that more powerful? Like just somebody like this to buy a car with the weather that we have in, in Jersey or in, uh, or in the Northeast Jersey? Well, I would, I would say this to folks. If, if you have more than one car in your household, one of them could be an all-electric vehicle. And you could use that for 95% of your driving around. And if you needed to go farther, then, then you would need to rely on another vehicle. If you have only one car in your household, go for the plug-in hybrid <coughs> because it has a gas backup and you can use it just like any other car. And it handles well in like snow and sure. really bad. Uh, Actually, they're heavier than the other vehicles because the battery in that car weighs 650 pounds. So it, uh, it gives it a lot, of, uh, a lot of grip on the ground. I found I was very comfortable driving the Fusion in the snow, but I found the Prius because it's got the smaller wheels uh, it's got the more shallow um, uh, 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 clearance. Um, that the, the Prius, I was not as comfortable in the snow. Um, I, did, I, I think that goes back to what you just said about the, pre, the Fusion being a heavier vehicle. And it has a standard wheelbase and standard tires. Uh, two questions. Do you have to have 240? No, you can, char you can, you can charge, charge up on, you can charge up on 110. Right. It takes longer. The 110 gain, a car plugged into 110 gains range at about three or four miles per hour that's plugged in. And on the, on the 240 volt, it gains range at about 20 miles for every hour it's plugged in. Then there's level three charging, which is uh, much faster. And then Tesla is the gold standard. They, you, they're even better. You changed the slide and ruined my second question. Oh, that one? No, the one before. That one? Yeah, how much is the doggy in the window? 
Mm. That's nice. what? I have two of those. They're golden doodles. They're like 90 pounds each. And they live in that bay window. That's what yeah. the is. Oh. And they love going for rides. She has a question. Uh, yeah. Hi, man. Um, when you buy the car, do you get this charger? Yeah, that comes with it. That, come, that comes with it. Do you have to get it? that separately? But this, this doesn't necessarily come with it. You have to buy that separately. So it's like putting in a clothes dryer circuit, uh -huh. which maybe costs 500 bucks or so to get an electrician. And then a unit would be as low as like $350. But you have to carry it in your car in case if... You can carry, yeah, you carry this this little thing you carry in your car. Uh -huh. this, this, this little thing right here. You just oh, keep that plug in. I guess I have a question. So that goes 105 miles for the non-plug-in. The one yes, above. Yes. So how do you recharge? How, how do you recharge that battery if it's it's really a plug? Isn't it still a plug-in? And you still have to charge. You charge it. it mostly. You charge it at night, like a cell phone, or you, or you so need it's a that. plug -in. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I mean, so what why do you call it a plug-in yeah, and why, not the other? Right. What's the difference? This one, plug the in. terms are, this one is a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. You would cut the plug it in. Right. As it has gas. As gas. Gas right. and a battery. Right. This one is a battery electric vehicle. Only a motor, electric motor. Only, only electric, and you plug it in. how long does it take? Solely plug in. Yeah. How long does it take? How long it takes to uh, fully charge, charge up? Um, on a 120 volt house current, that'll take okay, it'll take like a day. On uh, on this, if you use this charger, on this charger it'll take uh, about three hours on the 240 volt. Then beyond that, there's commercial fast chargers too that some cars can use, and they're they're substantially better, like 15 minutes. Is that three phase or something? This uh, this is. I mean the commercial charger. Yes. Yes. 